with us Yasser Omar, uh, who is the founder and the leader of the Physics of Information and Quantum Technologies Group at Institute of Telecommunications in Portugal, uh, and he is uh, representing here LEA Consortium. Yasser, it is my pleasure to give you the floor. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you very much for the kind invitation and congratulations for this very nice initiative. Um, so can you hear me well? Can you see my slide? Hello? Not yet. Yeah. Now you have okay. your first slide. Okay. And could you hear what I said before? Yes, perfectly. Excellent, excellent. So um, thank you once again and hello everybody. So I want to tell you about our project, Leia, Listening to the Earth Under the Atlantic. So um, my first statement is that our planet is alive. Um, and this is manifested by volcanoes and earthquakes. And uh, as you can see from this image, uh, these dots represent where uh, earthquakes are, are, are taking place. And as you can see, most of them uh, happen um, uh, in the ocean. And um, this is fascinating from the scientific point of view, but of course, this also implies uh, terrible and devastating consequences, uh, as in this unfortunate example that we uh, witnessed in Indonesia in, in 2018, where a strong earthquake followed by a tsunami caused immense uh, destruction and, and victims. So how can we, can we do something to, to prevent this, to, to get a warning about this? And we could, if we, get, if we got better data, closer to where these uh, underwater um, earthquakes are happening. And so how, what's the state of the art? How do we now, uh, today, um, are able to measure, to monitor this uh, seismic activity under the ocean? So what we do, we have these so-called ocean bottom seismometers. So these here in this example are built by my colleague Carlos Corella from the Institute Don Luis. And uh, let me just zoom in. And so essentially what, what they do is they put the, the well-known seismometers inside this um, orange capsule so it can go underwater. Then they add this weight so that it sinks to the bottom of the ocean. And they have this hook so that it can be fished back. And the way it works is that these uh, detectors, they are, they are submerged for a period of uh, six months to 12 months. They record the data and then in an expensive operation to not only deploy them, but then to recover them, you can go and recover this old data. So we do not have real-time data. And so this is very interesting for the scientific uh, research, but not so useful for, you know, real-time uh, warning about uh, tsunamis. And this is also um, expensive to, to deploy and to retrieve. So one way to try and <clears throat> make this uh, real-time data is to have some uh, communication with some buoys, and so some underwater communication and then some uh, satellite communication so that we could receive the data from these ocean, ocean bottom seismometers. However, this again is, is fragile, it's quite expensive and in practice is inefficient. And this is subject to um, you know, destruction by, by the weather, by uh, stealing uh, of some precious components or just the natural deterioration or even vandalism. And for an even simpler buoy, not such a sophisticated buoy, even for a simpler buoy that just measures the, 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 the level of, of the sea and not much more, we have this unfortunate example in, in Indonesia. And let me read this piece of news from the BBC then. These tsunami buoys were given to Indonesia a decade before to improve the early warning system. None of them remained functioning. And so, unfortunately, because of this, um, the um, early warning of the tsunami was not as um, efficient as it should have been. And uh, it was not possible to avoid uh, some loss of life. Um, unfortunately. And even when these systems work, there is the issue of how reliable are they? Even when they're operational and they issue a warning, can we trust this warning? Uh, because if it's a false alarm, then it will create panic. So the, the reliability of these devices and these warnings is extremely important as well. And a re recent example from a few months ago in Chile, uh, where, let me read again the news, Chile regrets panic caused by mistaken tsunami warning after an earthquake. So um, there's still a lot to improve 
uh, these systems with very important applications for the protection of, of life and, and infrastructure. So what can be done? And I think this is not so surprising, especially given the very nice presentation already by Bruce here and other discussions at the meeting. But so a new approach to submarine seismometry is to use submarine telecom cables to establish a long range, permanent, real time underwater observatory, in particular in the Atlantic. And so there are two complementary approaches. One, as Bruce described very well, is to essentially grab the technology that we know works on Earth or in these capsules that are the ocean bottom seismometers and attach them to telecom cables, in particular to the, to the repeaters of these telecom cables. And, and, these of, and then naturally we have a, a real time link to, this, uh, to the information obtained by these sensors. And of course, we can take this opportunity to go beyond the geophysics and also um, monitor environmental data, which can be very important for the, you know, monitoring the health of our oceans, but also with very significant impacts in uh, climate change and understanding climate change and, and climate. So this is the, the more straightforward approach. And although straightforward in my very simplistic uh, explanation, this has been non-trivial and Bruce in particular with his colleagues at the, the Joint Task Force, they have been working on this for, I believe, around 15 years. And to the best of my knowledge, this hasn't really been tried yet. And now we have an occasion and opportunity to do it here in Portugal. A, a second complementary approach is to actually study the, the signals that we get from these telecom fiber, so the telecom signals at the landing stations, and this could also give us, give us the information we're looking for, uh, but this is still ongoing research, um, and we don't know exactly to which extent it could work. We have good indications that it could work, but the extent of the success of this approach is yet to be determined, but I think it's a very interesting complementary approach, and to be able to uh, pursue both will be extremely enriching and will allow to, you know, benchmark these technologies and these approaches. And so what we've created is this project called LEA, Listening to the Earth Under the Atlantic. This is an initiative from three uh, uh, research institutes in Portugal, Instituto de Telecomunicações, Instituto Português do Mar e da Atmosfera, and Instituto Dom Luís associated to the Faculty of Sciences of the University of Lisbon. And we've been working together since uh, almost three years now. And so the goals of our project are, first and foremost, research investigate the use of submarine cables for real-time scientific monitoring of seismological, seismologic and oceanographic data. And of course, also their applications to civil protection. How can we use this data for civil protection, in particular for the early warning of tsunamis? And of course, also for other very important um, um, uh, areas, such as studying climate change and, um, and forecasting how things can evolve and even potentially to uh, study marine biology. And once we have this infrastructure, maybe even new ideas will emerge. And if you have them, do, do let us know we are interested. We also are taking the role of advising authorities on technical specifications for um, such infrastructure. And finally, we also have a training and outreach agenda to take this opportunity, which is quite unique, quite new, of having live data from the ocean bottom as a means for uh, scientific outreach. And finally, this is a, uh, an initiative that is very, very open to collaboration. So if you're interested, just let us know. So we are already doing some work with the current infrastructure and also contributing with our technical expertise to the shaping of the future uh, infrastructure. I'm talking about these telecom cables that you can see here. And so we have are having a very nice collaboration with Fibro Global using one of their fibers in, in the Azores Islands. And we've started dialoguing with some other organizations that are here and with whom we look forward to reinforcing our collaboration links. And uh, more recently, we've been uh, collaborating with IP Telecom in um, the, the shaping of the specifications for the smart component component, the sensing component of the cam ring, which I understand, uh, which you, you, you have discussed here, so I, I don't need to explain. And so the vision and the goal is to get a permanent real-time underwater uh, scientific observatory, namely with the smart cam in 2025. But even before that, we're already using current infrastructure, upcoming 
infrastructure like the one you're inaugurating to have a network of, um, of sensors. And so our vision for the observatory is actually this, the, this different, the complement of these different infrastructures present and future. So let me finish just by introducing our team. So Carlos Corello, Luis Matias, and Alvaro Feliz at uh, Instituto Don Luis, Fernando Carrillo at IPMA, and my colleagues Manfred Nibus, Rui Perdigão, and Vasco Sá at Instituto de Telecomunicações. This is a very uh, multidisciplinary team with expertise in uh, seismology, in early warning of tsunamis, in environmental and oceanography, and of course in all aspects of uh, telecommunications and physics of information. Um, and to my, my, my final uh, example is a, a simulation done by Fernando Carrillo and Luis Matias about the, imagine we had the smart cam uh, already in 1941 when there was in, in this um, uh, earthquake in the Gloria Fault um, in, in here in, in the Atlantic, and um, there was a tsunami. Fortunately, the, the consequences were very minor, but so there was a simulation. So here in, in, in yellow or orange, you can see the current seismometers that we have that are all on land, uh, including in these islands, of course. So this is, these are islands here, uh, Azores and Madeira, etc. cetera. Um, and, and, and these red triangles, this would a simulation. Imagine we had the smart cam with these smart sensors at the bottom of the ocean, then we would have been able to give a, a, an early warning of this 41 tsunami with a 36 minutes gain. This is extremely significant if you need to evacuate shores, infrastructure, population, of course, etc. And not only we gain in time, but also extremely important to some extent, maybe even more important, we gain in reliability, in certainty. We do not want to launch a false alarm and cause panic um, that we, we, if there isn't a real event. And this is it, let me conclude. So uh, what's our goal is to establish a permanent real-time underwater scientific observatory. This can be a revolution in the early warning of tsunamis and seasons, and, and therefore, of course, very important civil protection consequences for Portugal and for the world, a unique competitive advantage and leadership for Portugal in terms of science and civil protection, and of course, always connected to the rest of Europe and to the rest of the world not only as an example, but as a collaborator and integrating the emerging networks and uh, observatories that are uh, emerging now. And let me finish with our slogan, uh, listening the earth under the Atlantic or seeing the Atlantic as it was never seen before. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yasser. Uh, looking at uh, what you have presented, uh, which part is based on existing uh, technology and which part is based on technology, te technology that is still being developed? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your question, Jose. Um, so <clears throat> for the smart cam, for the smart cables, um, in, in, in this, although this was never really done in, in, in these uh, telecom repeaters, I think the technology is there. So we have um, all these sensors already exist. They were never really integrated in a, in, a, in a submarine repeater, but a priori, this shouldn't be a major technological challenge. Maybe some manufacturers will uh, disagree with me and maybe we can discuss this, but this is essentially based, it, from the sensing point of view, this is based on existing very well understood technology. Then we have this uh, complementary approach where we don't even worry about the signals at the cable, we try to look only at the signals, uh, the telecom signals arriving at the station and interfering with those signals. And this is really uh, research. This is not going to replace the, the smart cables. This will be complementary, at least at this early stage. And uh, the ideal is to have both. So this, this work that is done only at the landing stations, it's still very much, uh, you know, pioneering research, I would say. Um, we, we're trying to collaborate with, with, with people um, abroad who are pushing this technology as well. Um, and we don't know. If it works, this would be extremely interesting and revolutionary because then it means that if every millimeter of the optical fiber could work as a sensor as opposed to a repeater every 80 kilometers or so. But this, this is still open-ended um, and it's great to have the reliable technology in the, in the smart cable because it will help assess the, the, the power of these new ideas.
Okay, thank you very much, Yasser. Uh,